bit before I say I'm not. I just can't. I have too much in my life to go, and I have too much things going on in life to live for Satan. So we have to understand that we cannot judge, we cannot cast up the moat that is in our brother's eye because without him and without us, quite frankly, I can go up to Jamie right now and I can say, Jamie, can I cast the moat out of your eye because you know you going through some things. But what do I have? Because I'm pretty sure she can probably see what I have. So I can say, Jamie, can we cast the, the uh the um, robbery out of, out of your life. And she can be like, well, let me cast something out of your life. And I can be like, whoa, I've never seen that coming. Because people have got, like, we have a sneak attack. And we can always, always tell when we're being tested. You can always tell when we're being used. And a lot of times, we always call somebody else out. But sometimes we need to go to God and be like, well, God, I know I was wrong. God, I know I did wrong. God, I'm sorry. Can you forgive me, oh God? But we have to be considerate that it's not the beam that is in our eye. It's not the moat that is in their eye. It's just all wrapped in one. Because if we all love Christ, we should all be able to help one another. But we cannot help one another without casting out that deep because a lot of us nowadays I, i've seen as a matter of fact i've seen one of my friends a couple days ago and he was walking down the street and i said hey how's it going and he was like i can't call it i'm like mm. and so then i said well why don't you just come to church with me and the minute i said that what did he say he called me every name in the book you so and so, you still worshiping that God, that God has never done anything for me, is because He has not done anything for Maybe because you don't serve Him. You have to serve God. Yes. You have to serve God. Yes. You cannot just go around and say, well, I'm going to serve Him on Sunday, but then Monday and Tuesday, I'm going right. to serve this beer bottle. Yeah, right. Or Monday and Tuesday, I'm going to serve something else. Like, you can't do that because God is not a wishy-washy God. No, he is a jealous God. Yes, he is. So we have to understand that we cannot go and be wishy-washy with God because we doesn't because we don't want him to be wishy-washy with us. Amen. 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 So now I also was looking in the Bible and it also said in Luke 6 and 42 either how canst thou say to thy brother, brother, let me pull out the moat that is in my own eye. When thou thyself behold is not the beam that is in thine own eye, thou hypocrite cast out first the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to pull out the book that is in thy brother's eye. So I have it in two places. Not one, but two. I have it in Luke and I have it in Matthew. Uh -huh. So that just gave me clarity when I first got it. I'm like, okay, I got it in two places. So now I have something to back up on. So we can't just go on and say to people, well, I'm, I'm going to help you out this one time, or I'm going to help God out this one time, because God doesn't need your help. No, no, Does God need your help? No, no. So I know that I, I, I can speak for myself and say, when I say I need God's help, I need it. Yeah. When I need God's help, I do need that. And I'm not being funny and wishy-washy with it. I'm going to be like, God, I need you. God, I need you in my life now. I've learned to accept God 100%. Because I've looked in that mirror. I've looked in that spiritual mirror. And what I saw in the beginning, I did not like. So I had to change myself. I had to restore myself. I got confirmation over the weekend about restoration. I got confirmation over, over the week about spiritual renewal. So a lot of times we can always say, that we need a new spirit. But does God say you need a new spirit? Because the spirit lies within you. You have to look into that spirit. You have to say to yourself, what must I do to be saved? Because am I 100% saved? Am I 99% saved? God wants the full of you. God doesn't want 99% or 99.9. God wants that extra 0.1%. Yes, he does. So we have to understand that. We have to listen to God. Obey God's word. Yes. 
And whatever God say do, we have to do. Because we have to understand that it is for the betterment of us. Thank you, God. Now, I've over this weekend, I was talking to one of my closest friends, and I was actually asking her about this. I was like, I don't know what God's gonna give me. And she was like, Well, just listen to him. That's all right. So I go into my prayer council and I talk to God. I said, God. I don't have anything right now. I have nothing whatsoever. God said, just wait. I was like, well, you know, God, uh, it's about like a day and a half. So I need like, something now. And he's like, just wait. I said, all right. Wait on the Lord. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm waiting. I'm playing the Jeopardy game. Do, 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 do. All of a sudden, I hit this, and I'm actually in my car. And I forgot I had wrote this down. Luke 6 and 42. And I'm like, hmm. And so I was like, that's it. So I started working on it last night and the night before. And I was like, God, you have something awesome. Yes. Because without God, I couldn't stand before you and say, you know, I can do this all through Christ that strengthens me. I can't say that if I wasn't with God. God is my father. Yes, yes. So I can always say I can depend on him if I can't depend on nobody else. Even if I can't depend on my grandmother, I can depend on him. Amen. So that's what we have to start doing, saints. We have to stop depending on everybody else. Amen. We have to start depending on God. Because he has our life in his hands. Hallelujah. We need to stop depending on our father, our mother, our grandmother, our sister, our cousin, our best friend. Because all the time, they're not going to be there. We need to start depending on the one and the only God. Yes, so we have to understand that when God tells us to do something, we have to do it because it is for the betterment of us. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm almost through. Also, we notice that, like I said before, we started with this little problem. We started with this little problem. And we expect God to help us out because it's like a little problem. And all of a sudden, it starts to get bigger. And then it becomes what? A beam. So then we're the person with the beam. And then the, and then the next person that comes along with a small moat, we say, I can help you. I can, I, I, I can set you free. How can you set somebody free? How can you set yourself free? Amen. If you cannot set yourself free, how do you expect to set somebody else free? Amen. And I've learned that the hard way. I tried to help my how try to help my best friend to get saved. And it backfired. Because I found out I had some demons that I had to work out. So after I worked out my demons, and I'm still working them out. But I know with God's help, I know it's possible. So as I sit down, I want to leave you with this. God will never leave you nor forsake you. God will always, 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 always be there. God will never be the type of God to just say to you, well, I, I'm leaving you alone for right now because you just discerned me, so I'm, I'm just going to leave you right there for right now. No, because God is going to always be there through your struggles, through your trials, through your trials, through the tribulations, because he is an everlasting God. Hallelujah. So, as I leave you, I just want to tell you that God loves you all. God adores you, but now, are you willing to do the same thing? Amen? 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 Amen. 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 Thank you, God. Hallelujah, God.